I'm Chicky Bok Bok. Welcome to the show where neuralgia comes alive. Wait a minute. Neuralgia? Ugh, isn't that nerve pain? Why would you want to go to a show that gets on your nerves? Ooh, what's that? Oh, <laughs> nostalgia. Oh, thank you. Oh, welcome to the show where nostalgia comes alive. It's time for Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Enjoy. Roll it. Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Since July of 2021, Jake and his friends have interviewed professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and many more. Who will they be chatting with in this week's interview? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. Happy here with us. Thank you for joining. As always, I'm your host, Jake Duffenbaugh. We're here as always, our co-host, Chris Bixby and Matt Bingo. How you guys doing? Doing good. Doing good. Hi, everybody. How you doing, Jakey? I'm doing great, Matt. Thank you for asking. Chris, what do we have for today? Yes, again, happy you are here with us, folks. Today's guest is a puppeteer, writer, and director. From 1989 to 2015, he puppeteered a number of characters on Sesame Street, including Horatio the Elephant, Stinky the Stinkweed, Papa Bear, Ingrid, Murray Monster, many more characters that we'll be talking about. And in 1991, he also became a writer for the show and wrote for a number of other children's series as well, which we'll touch base on later. And here he is, Joey Mazzarino. Joey, happy to have you here. Hey, thanks, guys. Nice to be here. Yes. Yes, very Likewise. happy you're here. And that's the word on the street, pleasure. people. <laughs> yes. I love it. <laughs> right. Yeah. That is, that is yes. right. Yes. That's right. So to kick this off, so for those who don't know you, even though I did your introduction a little bit, could you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, sure. Um, so I uh, still consider myself a puppeteer at heart. That's how I started my career. Um, and then uh, somebody thought I was funny enough to try writing, and I did. Uh, and so that's what I do mostly right now. After I left Sesame Street, I mostly uh, do work as a writer. Um, and uh, and I do a little bit of directing, too. But I spent most of my career at Sesame Street. It was a, a huge uh, inspiration for me as a kid. And uh, it was a great place to grow and learn as an adult uh, working in my career. So, uh, yeah, I love Sesame. Still love it. It's a great place. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what was your background like and how did you grow up? Um, well, I grew up in uh, Brooklyn, New York. Um, I did not know puppetry was a thing that people did or could do for a living. I was so ignorant that I remember uh, going to see Empire Strikes Back with my dad and being in the car, going home, going, wow, that, that Frank Oz must be so tiny. Like, how did he fit in that costume? Like for Yoda, I, I totally <laughs> think for a minute that that could be a puppet. Um, I wanted to be an actor as a kid, uh, and, um, I was taking acting in college and I met a puppeteer. She invited me to Sesame Street to meet Jim. Uh, and when I did and visited, uh, I thought, oh my God, this is the greatest, this is the greatest job in the world. These are my people. How do I get here? What do I do to get here? Um, and that became sort of, uh, my obsession, like for a year, how do I become a puppeteer? absolutely absolutely so how were you inspired i guess i guess you kind of answered this a little bit but how were you inspired to get into puppeteering like as a career well, it really was seeing, as a career. well meeting jim was uh huge but i was so intimidated because i was such a fan of muppets at that point um but it was actually watching richard hunt i don't know if you or your audience know who richard was Oh, which yeah. was an amazing puppeteer mm -hmm. on Sesame Street and the Muppet Show. He did uh, Scooter is his his biggest character, but he did Sweetums and one of the old men, and he did uh, Forgetful Jones on Sesame. But I watched him. It was a Muppet Day shooting on Sesame Street, and I went and he was like, I want to say he was like an English butler that day and a cowboy and something else. And I thought, wow, this guy's using so many voices, and he made the crew laugh so much. And I thought. I want to be that guy. How do I get to be that guy? Um, and uh, he was my sort of my biggest inspiration. Then I went back. I was in college at the time. I went back into the costume shop at the theater department and I asked if I could borrow some fur and foam and some 
like those styrofoam wig heads and I made some really god awful puppets uh in my basement um but that's that was sort of my inspiration was Richard and that visit do you awesome. guys are you guys in, into puppetry I noticed you have oh like yeah stuff thing, do you guys puppeteer yourselves yes mm -hmm. I do yes I, yes, I, I do, do. Yes. all right awesome I do it's what was your inspiration Matt mine um my big inspiration was Sesame Street. I watched a lot of Sesame Street growing up. Although I I watched a lot like uh, Sesame and Fraggle Rock and those kind of shows growing up. But Sesame Street is my main inspiration because uh, yeah. it's 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 such a it's such an incredible show and it's been running for so long. You know, over fifty years. Like it's incredible. You know, you're you know you're you're doing something amazing if anything runs for fifty years. On yeah, I, I was the know? same in, in college. Like I would I would watch it because I worked at a nursery school and they would put it on and that's how I got sort of reintroduced to it in college. Um, and I thought, God, this is so funny. Like it's really funny for me. I, I would just watch it to laugh. I had no kids around me, but I would just watch it because I thought it was funny. Um, right. So that was that was a big inspiration for me too. Mm -hmm. awesome. And and Jake and Chris, you guys puppeteer as well. Yes, yes and yes, some we of do. my biggest inspirations I usually credit it to three shows: Sesame Street, of course, uh, Bear in the Big Blue House, <laughs> great and show. Between the Lions. I was going. Um, I, I, great I, I, shows. <laughs> oh, so yes. I was thinking those those three three shows, though, Chris. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I you know, we kind of same answers with both of them. I, I you know. You know, I was born a little like later than both of them, but you know, I grew up set with you know, Sesame, Bear, Between the Lions, Frog Walk. You know, it's just. You know, How did you guys become a uh, a team of podcasters? Was it your love of uh, of puppetry that that got you together? Uh, well, kind of, well, kind of more well, of a um, kind of more of a well, not just Sesame Street, but like a wide variety of shows uh, that that we grew up with. I actually came in a little later once the show kind of got off the ground a couple uh -huh. months afterwards, but Chris and Jake are like the OGs of this show. Yeah. And uh, how long I, have you guys I, been doing? Uh, a little over two, two years. years, just oh, yeah. over two years. That's so. great. So for many years, you worked on Sesame Street as a puppeteer, writer, and director. How did that yeah. kind of kind of began uh, that you started working on that? Um. So after when I was in college um, and I got obsessed for a year of like just building really terrible puppets in my basement, I would also put up a video camera in my room and teach myself. I had a, a TV attached to it and I would teach myself the, you know, that style puppetry in front of a camera and everything's reversed. And I did it for I, like all the time. I literally, my parents were worried about me because I was building puppets at night and practicing when I wasn't at school in front of a camera all day. I did that for like a good solid year. Uh, I would put on the Little Mermaid soundtrack and lip sync to it and find songs I love. Um, and uh, I sent a tape in of me doing puppets uh, to Camille. Her name is Camille Camporis now. She was Camille Benora at the time. She was a Sesame oh, yeah. puppeteer. Yes. She was the woman who introduced me to Jim and a huge influence in my life. Um, and uh, I sent it to her and she was like, that's actually pretty good. I'm going to send it on to Kevin Clash. And she did. And Kevin started bringing me in um, on um, like as a right hand or to do little day player things. And I actually did a, a show for him in Baltimore uh, at where he was from. Oh, uh, no um, kidding. Yeah, nice. Kevin's from Baltimore. It was a, a, a mm -hmm. station. I think it was called WMMR was the station, I believe. We shot it at their studio and it was called, hmm, let me remember what this was called. It was about reading. It was called Milo's Secret. It was about a kid who couldn't read. That was one of my mm. first. Mm. Um, and that was uh, that was my you know how I got into Sesame Street. Um, Kevin and Camille, you know, Camille saw something and Kevin did too, and they invited me to start working there. Nice. Wow. Wow. That's that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, so, do you remember your first day and the first role you performed for Sesame? Of course, you never forget that. Um, it was um, I was a it was a song. It was a Muppet song called "Wet and Dry" or something like that. It was a song, and it I was in the wet section, which was I was a a female sailor on a ship, and it was like called the Good Ship Wet. And I just remember crew guys were throwing water at us, and uh, oh as boy, we <laughs> It was super fun and super exciting. But yeah, that was my first puppet 
um, that was the first time I puppeteered on the show. It was 1989. Nice. Um, for, I think mm. it was called Wet and Dry. Awesome. Hmm. So some of your earlier characters on the show, as I mentioned in your introduction, include uh, Horatio the Elephant and uh, Papa Bear. What was it like yeah. performing them? Um, I, Horatio was amazing because, well, he started off as a half body puppet and then he, as he developed, I had asked if we could like add legs to him and they did because it was a dance thing and they made these legs and then he became an upright full body puppet and I'd never done that before. And I found it so amazingly freeing just to use your whole body for your puppetry. Um, cause I could kick my legs up and, you know, shake his tail and it was just so freeing and so fun. Also dangerous because I couldn't see anything, but it was, I would wound up, I think I wound up like smacking somebody with a rod from my trunk once because I couldn't see, um, oh, wow. but it was uh, a super fun uh, puppet and Papa Bear was amazing. When I first really started getting roles, I always was uh, paired up with David Rudman a lot and I was right, Papa yeah. Baby Bear. So I was his dad and I was Ingrid to his Humphrey. So I was his wife and I was Joey Monkey to his Davy Monkey. So I was his brother so yeah, we did a lot together and it was always, a, I always loved being in scenes with scenes with David. Oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah. we're having uh, someone else join us. He's also a podcaster and he hosts a podcast called the DJ Bob show. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yes. And here he is, DJ Bob. Hey, DJ Bob. Be coming. There you go. First, first time in a bit we've had a guest co-host. Hi, Bob. Hi, DJ Bob. <laughs> ah, yeah, Bob, Bob Blanco, everybody. Yes, Bob's a good oh, friend of ours, and he's had his podcast for how long has it been? Hey, Thirteen. Bob, I just I just got an email about you years. today from Jim. Oh my god, did you? I did. <laughs> Justin, I literally just replied to him, and now I was we, like, Bob Runkle. Yeah. I hope his middle name is yours, so it's now Bob we have Runkle. to do it. <laughs> wow, how are you, small Bob? world. How are you, Bob? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's nice to meet you, DJ Bob. Nice to meet you too. Where are you in the world? Long Island. All right. New York boy. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, Bob Runkle has joined us, ladies and gentlemen. Glad yes. you're with us, Bob. It's been a bit since we've had a guest co-host on our yep. show. So this is a, so this is nice. It's nice. Glad you're here. Yes. Uh, Bob's been, Ooh. Bob was kind of, you mentioned our, uh, how we got started. Bob is a huge inspiration for, for us. He's been helping us with our show a lot and uh, just been, helping us okay. out with our show and vice versa so it's we work well together yeah and yeah, for about so. uh two three years i was a co-host on his show amazing and i and i currently work with him as an assistant yeah, yeah. so just kind of helping him i out bring everything. yeah That's you awesome. got to work with people you know That's yeah. great. yep yep absolutely yep absolutely absolutely glad you're here bob so during the 90s, uh, there was the Around the Corner era, which for those who don't know, was uh, started out in season 25. Uh, it was around for only a couple of years where you got to uh, do another recurring character, Stinky the Stinkweed. How did, oh, how did Stinky come about? Oh, man, I remember the development of the, the voice and the character. Actually, no, I do remember. It was a grouch plant. It wasn't originally as part of the Around the Corner. He was a grouch plant that belonged to Oscar. And I think actually David was scheduled to do it, and he couldn't do it that day, so they threw it to me. I think his name might have been Stinky. And um, I remember developing the character with Norman Stiles, who was the um, head writer at the time. Good friend of ours, and, yes. And, and previous Norman, guest. Oh, awesome he's great and norman mm -hmm. uh, introduced me to um uh the 2000 year old man albums by mel brooks and carl reiner and there was a bit in there where uh mel brooks played um was talking about his kids and he would guilt them into you know he was this old man and he would guilt his kids into staying there and i started to use that for stinky uh be like it's all right you go i'll just i'll stay here in the dirt with the worms you go have fun enjoy your life i'll just be here alone <laughs> ah, so we started to um he started to develop on that kind of um using his guilt to get people to uh to to do what he wanted because he he really couldn't do anything he was stuck in the dirt right uh, but i love that character oh yeah absolutely yes mm -hmm. love stinky yeah. And he was so simple. He was just a simple, like, piece of foam, you know? He was just such a great design, great, great face, great nose. I miss yes. that guy. 
<laughs> so similarly with Around the Corner, what's that going to perform the Ingrid and Joey Monkey? Uh, again, you know, anything I got to do with David was great. The whole development of Around the Corner, you know, I was a new, I was just new to the writing staff back then. Um, so that was super exciting. You know, John Stone, who, you know, was one of the key figures in creating Sesame Street was still there at the time. And he was helping lead that whole around the corner thing. It was something that was at the time, we weren't sure we should do it. And there was, this, uh, we didn't know if it'd be good, but everybody kind of just threw themselves into it. And just being around all those people, Norman and John Stone and uh, being able to create with them and um, come up with characters with them. That was super fun. And then, you know, doing Humphrey is such a funny character that David does. And uh, that voice I did for Ingrid, I I remember seeing, um, what's the name of the movie? It's a Disney movie, The Black Cauldron. And oh, yeah. John, John, oh, Biner, yeah. John Biner did that voice of Gurgi in that movie. And when I was a kid, I go, how's he doing that? Where is he putting that voice for Gurgi? And I, I, I one day, I, I figured it out. It was like, this, this job crunchings and munchings. And he put it in the back of his throat. I was like, that's amazing. I, uh, when I could figure out what muscle to use to get that voice, I was like, I got to use that. And then um, when Ingrid came up, I just did it and I just put it back in my, in my voice there and I just brought it up an octave. Um, so it was kind of cool to use that thing that I had. I mean, literally, I was probably 12 when I figured out how to do it and I was happy I could use it. And Joey Monkey, uh, I mean, I got to do some fun stuff with Joey Monkey. I don't even remember how the monkey started. I don't, I didn't create the monkeys. It was written by somebody else, but it was super fun to do because it was Dave and me. And uh, we got to work with people like Marissa Tomei and do really silly things. I loved it. Definitely. Oh, yeah. So in 1996, there was a, a Christmas special called Elmo Saves Christmas where you got to perform the character Lightning. Can you kind of talk a bit about performing him? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was super fun. Um, uh, I, <laughs> I ran into Charles Durning years later because Charles Durning, the actor who played S Santa Claus on a uh, thing, and I ran into him and I, I'm not going to be able to use the language he used because it was so dirty, but I ran into <laughs> Charles Durning on the street and I was like, Mr. Durning, hi, this is, uh, my name is Joey. I played Lightning uh, the Reindeer for you with, on Sesame Street. He goes, ah, Sesame Street, you tell those blank suckers i said hello and i was like oh my god what <laughs> oh man I, I i just i just like couldn't believe he, i just heard that from charles Durning, and it, it made me laugh so hard and uh I, I didn't tell anybody i said he said hello but i didn't use the first part right, um, yeah. <laughs> right. So uh, but it was a yeah. great i mean it was a great special really fun to do if oh, i yeah. could if i could if i could um interject that, sure. DJ Bob. that special yeah. was so pivotal to to my sort of growth and development and just I think it was one of the first sesame projects that I really, really, really latched on to. What I was it two, about the oh sorry, go ahead, Bob. I have two copies of the tape still. Just in case one wears out, it's just so special. To oh, me. that's awesome. Yeah. I love that. What that was it about that special amazing. that you loved, Bob? What I what I loved about it was it was such a um it was one of the last sesame things where it's like the old the old seventies and eighties formula where it's like the 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 music stings and the writing and the self self referential humor. Like it's, mm -hmm. after that it kind of just I mean it's always been there, but it's really a callback to the early days. Oh, that's awesome. I haven't seen it in so long. I can barely remember what it was about, but I think it was that Elmo makes a wish that Chris is that the one at Christmas? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, and I I always love the parts with uh, Maya Angelou and uh, with Telly and Zoe and Baby Bear. Yeah. Oh, is that, is she reading them a story or something? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, special. What an I, I'm so lucky. I I mean, all of us who got to be there is so lucky. I mean, where else do you you know get to work with Maya Angelou and uh, you know 
the first ladies and amazing stars and it's just an amazing it's such a good place to work absolutely and everybody loves being there you know everybody's on their best behavior and of course yeah. excited to be there i remember when actually when mrs obama came on the show she like everybody else most people including myself turned into a five-year-old kid when she was on that set and she saw roscoe orman who plays gordon uh come out towards her and she's just like oh my gosh can i give you a hug and he was like yeah of course um but she was just, you know same as all of us like just that inner child just came bursting through <laughs> that's yeah we've wonderful. we've we've heard a we've heard a lot of those kind of stories uh i think we seem to bring the story up uh, i think it was uh, i can't remember who but somebody brought up uh tracy chapman on sesame street before and she was she was she was like in in tears i don't remember what season it was she was on but i didn't but, even know tracy uh, chapman did the show yeah yeah i think it, it might have been sometime in like the 90s or early 2000s probably okay. i can't re- i i can't remember well, I, I wasn't um, there. i know chris here wrote the song for that that's all i know oh who did yeah. that? chris surf yeah. christopher yeah. surf christopher surf who was another good friend and previous guest, previous guest. love chris surf oh yeah he's yeah. great oh, wonderful Maybe. yes Yes, they're they're all amazing. So, uh, speaking of characters, in two thousand one, you took on the role of the left hand of the two headed monster from Jerry Nelson. What was it like doing inserts with the two headed monster, especially taking over from such an iconic man as Jerry Nelson? Yeah, um, it was probably the most freeing character of all because there's not really anything scripted and you just, you know, when you have to react and you know, and I get to again, do it with David Rudman. So uh, it was super fun. Anytime you put on, like, anytime you put on another person's character though, it is a little bit stressful and a little bit like, Oh, I don't know if I could do what they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But at some point you just have to like, just you take the little essence you can of the person and you just do it your way and you have to, otherwise you're stuck. Right. Um, and I found that yeah. character completely freeing and fun and, you know, such great memories of like working with Robin Williams. Uh, that was one of the high points of my career, him being on the show and just kind of riffing with Robin Williams. It was so fun. So, uh, you know, I love Jerry. It was, uh, what an honor to be able to put my hand in one of his puppets. It was tough because I actually had to puppeteer with my left hand, which I never do. Um, but uh, that w- it was a challenge, but super fun and an honor. It was great. So on the subject of inserts, you also puppeteer the character Narv in Monster Clubhouse. Can you talk a bit oh, about doing that? Oh, goodness. I, I remember it. I just can't. I, Monster Clubhouse was a short-lived thing. Mm-hmm. I barely remember. But again, like monsters, anytime you have monsters, and especially I remember like it was sort of wild ids kind of running around like nuts. Um, and that's, again, just fun and freeing. But I could barely remember Monster Clubhouse. I remember he was a big, tall orange guy, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I remember it being fun. I couldn't tell you one. Yeah, I was I was talking to my friend uh, Michael Shupak about that. And he, Shupak, I love that Shupak. He was like, <laughs> he was yeah, like, I designed that. Oh, he did. That's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, oh, that's, my fault. <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> yes. So another one of your longest running characters on Sesame Street was uh, Murray Monster. How did, uh, what kind of went into uh, developing that character? Okay, so Murray is very interesting. Um, at some point, I don't remember the year, it was the year of half, like healthy eating. Um, they liked, the producers liked how I spoke to kids with puppets, like my improv skills with kids. But that year they would have me interview kids as a broccoli. And it it went fine, you know, I would introduce him as a Muppet Broccoli, but I thought, who the hell wants to talk to a broccoli? Um, And I remember that year I was in, I was in Cairo as a writer, uh, helping um, Egyptian writers learn how to write for their, you know, write the Sesame style for their show. And they had a character named Phil Phil, who had the most wonderful smile built into the face. It had the big um, sort of lower jaw that kind of curved up. And I thought, wow, what a beautiful design. And just by happenstance, they had ordered some new anything Muppets that year and they get delivered in. 
And I see one of them is based on the same pattern. He's purple, I think, in Egypt and is slightly different, but he has that same um, head shape. And I saw it come in and I said to Kevin Clash, who was in charge of all the casting of the puppets, I said, Kev, I don't know what I want to do with it, but please don't give that to anybody yet. I want to do something with it. Um, and we were about to do, a few weeks later, we were going to do some more interviews. And I was scheduled to interview kids as a broccoli. And I was like, hey, guys, you know, is it possible I could not do this as a broccoli? Can we do this as a monster, particularly this monster? And they said, yeah, you know what? Give it a shot. And I was literally about to start shooting. And first kid was about to be called in. I said, oh, my God, I don't even know what this character's name is. We got to name him. And there was a visitor to the set. Some old man just goes, he's furry. Call him Murray. And Murray was my grandfather's name. And I was like, yes, I will call him Murray. And, uh, uh, and oh that was, it was just like that. And uh, we started, uh, started that bit. And I said, hi, I'm Murray. And that was it. Um, but that's how, that's how he came about. And, uh, and it worked well. And uh, then he, we started to do more with him. Uh, we did the word on the street segments. Um, yes. Mm -hmm, which yes. Was super fun. Oh my gosh. That was the greatest week of my year every year. Cause it was just, they would send us out with a small crew around New York city and some kids we would have like we'd go to a school and say, Hey, we want to interview kids. But a lot of times it was just people passing by in the street and go, Hey, come on over and talk to a puppet. <laughs> and, and we would just <laughs> ask them about the word. And, and it was super gorilla filmmaking, uh, super fun. You never knew what it was going to be get. It was always like, I remember showing up to one street in Brooklyn and this woman was walking her dog and smoking a cigarette. And she was so mad. Like, what are you, what are they shooting here now? And I said, Sesame Street. She was like, oh, stay as long as you like. Like, it just was like, <laughs> it was like this magic. It just changed people's attitudes. Except one time we were shooting a Murray segment in Red Hook, Brooklyn. And literally we're in the middle of shooting it. And it became a crime scene as we shot it. Boats, we were in front of the river uh, and boats came in, police boats went in with divers, helicopters came in. Turns out somebody had like thrown a bag in the water and it had a bloody piece of carpet and this note in it. And we shut down for the day and I was like, oh, that stays like, that's just not what I want to have my day go like that. They're, this wow. Was wow. Oh, my goodness. Um, but yeah, that, but most days it was, it was good. There were some days I was in a park and some guy tried to attack me. There were a couple of times. <laughs> it was a couple of times with my puppet on that people, one guy started to climb over tables to attack the puppet. Another time we were shooting by a ping pong table like this. Um, there was this stone ping pong table in the park in, in the village. And this guy obviously was mad we were shooting there because it was messing up his ping pong. And he just was staring me down the whole time. And he had one a pair of glasses. One glass was in it. And the other one didn't have anything in it. And he was staring me down, moving towards me as I'm shooting. And luckily, my crew was, the crew was so awesome. They just like stored, made a circle around me to protect me from this guy. Um, so there were days like that. Oh, We're wow. shooting in New York. You go, oh. That's crazy. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, there was another right. time that with the craft, you know what craft service is? Craft oh, service yeah. Is mm -hmm. yeah. So somebody came over and wanted food and they said, sorry, you know, this is for the crew. And he took out a piece of his anatomy and stuck it in the hummus. And I was like, wait, what just happened? So there were days like that. <laughs> oh, man. You just never know what's going to happen on the streets of New York. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, since you already mentioned about the word of the day uh, segments, uh, what was it like again to do Murray Had a Little Lamb segments? Oh, man. Super crazy and super fun, but super crazy because we would have, like, we knew the location, but we didn't know anything else. So we'd go into a location and go, okay, we're going to sit in on a class. And we would sit on a class and we'd put Murray and Overheater in the class and figure out how to shoot it. And the kids really do their thing. Then by the end of the day, we try to figure out how do we get Murray and Ovahita without with very little planning to do the things the kids just did in the class, like karate or skating. And we would just, the crew was amazing. We would jerry rig these things like, um, you know, they'd take a little dolly from the uh, 
from the back of the lighting truck and put me on it and just drag me around the bases as I scream out, ah, I'm the, I don't even remember what it was. It was like, I'm the best baseball player ever or something like that. And it was just crazy fun and crazy, like just off the cuff. And really, I loved it. That was one of my, again, one of my favorites. Really hard to do. Yeah. You have, yeah. You know, 40 kids and you're trying to shoot 40 kids and two puppets. Uh, not to, and I, not I, to I, mention some unknown rapper, uh, term Broadway star, Lin Manuel Miranda. <laughs> Lin Manuel Miranda, yes. He did the theme. I used to joke that, yeah, he he, you know, he sings about uh, Hamilton and Murray. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, Lin actually. So Lin had already done in the Heights, uh, mm-hmm. and I had seen in the Heights with my wife, and I said, oh man, we have got to get the people who did the music for this show to be part of Sesame Street, and I. St- stayed behind afterwards and um you know lynn lynn had already been working on electric company with um sesame workshop at the time oh yeah he, okay he, yeah. he did some stuff then we brought in bill sherman who also did music he didn't write the music but he did music on, on uh in the heights and he became our music director and chris jackson wrote a bunch of stuff for us uh that was all from in the heights it was just they were so talented definitely absolutely yeah, some of my no, favorite Yes, uh, some of my favorites were Hello Lamb segments that where they go into karate school. Yeah, that was um, our pilot. That was when we said, can we do this? And we, All right, we can. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and that was like, how do we do this? How do we figure out how to do the push-ups and breaking a piece of, you know. <laughs> and it was just fun Gosh. to throw Ovahita everywhere. Yes. Yeah, and speaking oh, of yeah. Ovahita, Carmen's also a previous guest that is a good friend she loves carmen absolutely wonderful. yes oh, she's best oh, carmen's so, so, so amazing um, yes. yes and yes. very uh, kind and lovely yeah oh, yes what, oh gosh what very else do i remember yeah, there's, uh, there's an arts there's an art school one i remember. yeah i was uh-huh. just gonna bring that up i was just gonna bring that i was, I was going to say like did they do a painting one or something yeah there's that was that was the uh, uh, gymnastics school. Gymnastics, yes. Oh, gymnastics. gymnastics was super fun. Anytime it was physical, we could try to figure out how to do. You know, we had wild legs for Murray. So, like, I remember he was on the rings and he was trying to hold the rings, and then he loses his balance and he goes under the the frame, and his legs come popping up. You know, you just figure that stuff out on the day. Like, okay, and I think uh, he's like, "I'm the Lord of the Rings." <laughs> um, but you know, that was you just make it up as you go. Oh man, right. pretty much, yeah, yeah. exactly. So um yeah. I know I know a lot of uh, Sesame fans might be wondering um if 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 you if, you know uh, if you can't do it no worries at all um is it fine if we can hear a bit of Murray? Sure, of course. Um, hi, this is Murray Monster. What's the word on the street? Ovahita. Where's my little Ovahita? Of course, I love doing Murray. I miss him. I miss that face. That beautiful, beautiful face. <laughs> that is so uh, wonderful. Yes. That's we, amazing. That we great. miss you. We, we miss you too, Murray. Thank yes, you. Likewise. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Yes. <laughs> so yes. um so uh so Bob, so you have an interesting question you have for Joey, right? Yeah. So take it, take it away, my friend. Apparently, my dear friend. Noel McNeil, oh. when you were just starting out, used to like harass you on the Eureka Castle and, and give you crap. Yes, of course he did, but but very fun loving <laughs> crap. Do you want to know what his nickname was back then? Yes, yeah. what? Oh, what the meanest man in Puppet Land? Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> I used to call him the meanest oh man gosh. in Puppet Land, but he was actually. He used to give me crap, but it was always in really good fun. I had, that was, that was a job right out of college. And I actually had to, I took a chance and took that job because Sesame Street season was coming up Hmm. and it was an opportunity to go do Eureka's Castle in Orlando. And I had just finished school and I was like, I'm going to do this. I I really want to do it. And it was such a good decision because that show was so much fun and the puppeteers on that show were just such a team and noel who i'd got to do his tail and his his hand of magellan who magellan is a beautiful wonderful character and i love him so much and you know it was just noel 
and Pam Arciero and Brian Meal oh, and Pam, Hip and yes. Cheryl Blaylock and Jim Krupa and oh. Rob Gardner was uh, um, there to, with the puppet stuff. And it was just this amazing group of people. And as a young person starting out, I was like, I can't, I couldn't have asked for a more supportive, lovely group of people. And I remember they gave me a, and oh, by the way, that show was written, his scripts used to say, Jovial Bob Stein. They were written by Robert Stein of uh, of Goosebumps fame. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was just, what a great place. And Noel was the greatest big brother in the world to have. Uh, yeah. He, when I first started doing my podcast, it really wasn't children-centric. I was interviewing like punk rock bands, anybody that I could get my hands on. 13 years ago but then I wanted to delve back into my childhood and the first person I reached out to was Noel oh, and wow. he's been a constant advocate for what we do and a couple months ago he actually tried to get you and I in touch but it didn't pan out um I'm sorry but, I didn't even notice it Bob I apologize but um yeah, he's been a big advocate. Oh, uh, he's the best. He really is. Noel's a great, great guy. Yes, absolutely. I, in also, fact, when I was part of the audition process for Bear in the Big Blue House, I was helping Mitchell Kriegman. Mm -hmm. And Noel yeah. wasn't even on that list. And I was like, oh, you have to see Noel. Like, Noel is the, like, because I just thought about Magellan and how natural yeah. it is. And how it, was, oh, yeah. it was you who recommended him and also Rick Fernandez. Oh, is that right, Rick, too? Yeah. yeah I, I love like, Rick. Oh, Rick, yeah. Rick's yeah. Rick is. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Definitely. Yes. Kind of, kind of a full circle moment between the two of you right about now. <laughs> right. <laughs> All these years later. It's, it's, it's wonderful. So moving to your time writing for Sesame Street, yes. do you have any favorite episodes or inserts you got to write for? Well, I mean, the one that was sort of pivotal to me both personally and I, it made me sort of have a revelation about the show because I really did think you know I'm writing this show and it's funny and it's uh but I'm I wasn't thinking about the audience as much and I wrote um with Chris Jackson actually I wrote I love my hair oh uh, yes yes yeah, wonderful Kinsley. song and it yes. was because uh, uh both my children are adopted they're from Ethiopia and my daughter was having issues about her hair my wife had long blonde hair that was straight and my daughter had uh, curly um brown hair and i wanted her to feel great about her hair and at the same time um chris rock had a movie called good hair and i realized oh this isn't just a problem uh that kids face when they have a, a, a mom that doesn't look like them this is a, a um something that african-american girls deal with all the time and i thought i want to just write this uh Thing about my for my daughter and about pride into her, who she was in her hair and I, I remember when we shot that piece we added it at the last minute i remember carolyn parente was the executive producer and i said look i have this idea can we add it on a day an insert day and she said yeah and um when we were shooting it i just remember all of um the women the um, African-American women from the, the crew and the staff came down to watch us shoot it. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And then when it first aired, I got a call at the office and um, um, one of the uh, the women that worked on the staff said, you have a call. Do you, do you want to, uh... I said, who is it? She said, she, she works for a Senator, a New York Senator. And she's like 54 years old and she loves, I love my hair. And I said, oh, yeah, put her through. And I realized, oh my gosh. And it, it turned out that a bunch of people, it became this sort of um, a viral on YouTube, but also people just responded to it, especially women uh, of color. And, and I thought, oh, wow, you never know. You just don't know who your audience is going to be. So it made me realize you never know what you put out in the world and what are you putting out in the world and how are you putting it out in the world? And uh, being very cognizant of that going forward and going, you actually can make you know, you can make somebody's life better with what you do. You can make somebody's life worse with what you do. And it made me really think about, oh, what am I putting out in the world? Um, and how is it helping rather than harming? Definitely. Uh, so that was, uh, that's probably one of my favorite uh, pieces that I ever did. Nice. Yes. Uh, that's um, wonderful. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and the power of yet. That's oh, amazing, my God. Amazing yes. song. Love I that. loved, you know, because I got to 
to write. I wrote that with Bill Sherman. Um, and I got to direct that and be in it. And Janelle Monet, I mean, you, Janelle Monet is amazing. She's like a force of nature. She was amazing to work with. And uh, yeah, I just remember like she saw me put it because she knew I wrote it and I was directing it. Then I, I put on, I can't remember if it was Two-Headed Monster. I think it might've been Two-Headed Monster. She's like, wait, you do that too? Yeah, you could do anything. And I was like, oh, thanks. Yeah. So and then of course you had like Andy Blank and Bueller like doing uh, yes that. yeah we had Andy there to uh to choreograph it wow how did you know that that's pretty impressive I, deep deep cut that is a deep cut that's pretty amazing uh yeah it was just an amazing day to be on the set definitely I love those days there was a piece I didn't write it but I directed it um with Sutton Foster called Lever Lover and I really wanted to do it in one shot and she came on and I said, Hey Sutton, I, this is, may sound crazy and you may not be able to do it. It's okay if you can't, but I'd love to figure out how to do this as a one -er. And, uh, and she was like, I don't know, that sounds crazy, but let's try it. And she did it. She was unbelievable. And the whole cast, everybody, because uh, it was a full, the started at Hooper store came outside into the, into the Arbor and then opened up to this huge thing of the street. It was so cool. Definitely. Mm hmm. Absolutely. So during your time on Sesame Street, speaking of like songs and that, you also got to write a number of celebrity numbers and parodies. Boy, yeah. I, I love those. And <laughs> I it even too. it even dates back to the older days of like parodies and whatnot. Who were some of your favorite celebrities you got to work with? Yeah, because I know, of course, you mentioned uh, Janelle Monae. Janelle Monae is probably up there in the top five. Uh, you know, Kevin Klein did a, uh, a, I did write that episode. This is a long time ago. This is one of my first years writing. My first celebrity, it was a whole episode he was in. And it was a Columbo. Columbo was in the episode and he oh, played yeah. a detective. Oh, called yeah. Nick, he, Nick Chicken and his sister, Nora Chicken, and who was an actual chicken. And um, I remember him calling my house the night before we shot because he had questions about the character. And I was like, I can't believe Kevin Klein is calling me about anything. And the fact that he wants to discuss the character and sort of the, the give it dimensionality to the silly character that I wrote, I thought, wow, that's amazing. And he was so funny on set that day. So he was definitely, because he took it so seriously and he was so amazing. Who else? Um, um, you know, I, I loved, uh, I got to write an episode that Tina Fey was on and she was really fun to work oh, yeah, with. Yeah. The, uh, mm -hmm. wow. So hilarious. And she really just fit in so well with the puppets. Um she was like a perfect um person to act alongside of. Uh Elvis Costello was great because oh we had, yeah we had mm -hmm. done a, um yes. a patty of uh Angels Wanna Wear My Red Shoes. And I was in the recording studio with him when he recorded it. And he was like, I haven't sung this since I was so young. I don't even know if I can get into that range. And he did. And he was so cool. And I remember him thinking, should I have my family come? And we're like, yeah, you have kids. Like, let them come. They'll love it. And he did. And he, he started welling up. Like when his kids walked on the set and he saw them react to Elmo and Cookie Monster, you could see Elvis getting like so emotional that his kids were having this moment. It was really beautiful. Oh, um, so he was oh, awesome. Oh. But it's uh, it, there are so many people that it's almost hard to remember who they all are. Um, Absolutely, because you know, obviously, you wrote so much for you know celebrities and things like that. Right. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely stands out. Like, like you know, when when a Mrs. Obama comes, you just remember she was so kind and so um, thoughtful and just talked to everybody. I loved her. Um, yeah, it's it's tough to remember everybody. Oh, Bruno Mars was super. Cool. yes oh my god oh yes oh yeah i remember um murray was also a part of a song that um ed sheeran was uh i live in two different worlds that's what's up and that's what's last wait time. a minute what the heck is tara doing here tara. <laughs> hi joey oh my god look at you how are you tara i'm good i've missed you i miss you oh my gosh it's so good to see you yeah what is yeah. happening in your world um well right now i i don't know if i even said but should i say it bad yeah um me and bob are gonna uh he's gonna help me start a podcast hey congratulations 
So awesome. yeah. I, what is I, what, what's your podcast? Uh, what's the focus going to be, Tara? Um, the focus is going to be just stuff that I'm into, like like video games I'm into, books I'm into, and then interviewing cool people. Um, what's your what kind of books are you into right now? Um, young adult fiction usually is my favorite. Wow, Tara, what years were did you join Sesame during the Around the Corner era? Was that when you started? Yeah. Or after? Yep. That, it was no, yeah, it was, Yep. It was ninety three wow. to two thousand. Three. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That mom was getting too stressed with the drive because it was up to five hours by the end. Oh my gosh. And they were asking for me more because I was getting better at it. Wow. It kind of backfired. So. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Yes, and Tara is a good friend of ours, and she was also a previous guest. And we mm -hmm. we we actually talk, going back to when we interviewed Carmen, we actually surprised Carmen with Tara as well. Yes, yes. Oh my did. gosh, it's so good to see you, Tara. I always I, I I don't know, and I've told Rob about this, but like I feel like it's been so long, and the way we left was so awkward. Like I know what we're all friends, but seeing you guys and seeing how happy you were to see me, I'm not as anxious. I've been anxious to contact you guys because I don't want to feel like I'm bugging you, even though. Oh, I'm you never. I you would, yeah. no never feel that way. Oh my God, it's I'm so happy to see you. Yeah. I can't believe it was 93 though. That makes me feel. Yeah. old. Oh my God. Yeah. If Mom was here, she'd be happy too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh man. Yeah, screen. screen. Being here, Tara. Yes, yeah. wonderful. Oh, you're here, thank, Tara. Thank yes. you for allowing me to surprise someone again. I appreciate it. Oh of my course. god. Yeah. Yes, of course. Of yeah, course. Absolutely. Yes. And it's very exciting that you're going to do your own podcast, Tara. Yeah, well, that's great. You can blame Bob for that. He's been Bob. Up my yes. Yes. Bob. Yes. It's important. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Good job, yes. Bob. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Bob. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I basically, I basically said to her, You have a lot to say. Okay. That's good. That's awesome. Yeah. How did you guys meet? I met them. They asked me to be part of the podcast, like Jake's podcast. Okay. And then through them, I uh, found out that I was one of DJ Bob's idols because he was watching during the Around the Corner era. <coughs> and he, uh, we decided to surprise him for his birthday by having me show up. It was just Ooh. like a birthday Zoom call. Yes, and he yes, flipped great. out. It was so awesome. Like, flipped <laughs> out with excitement. Like, what is going on right now? Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah because when you don't, when it. you don't, when you don't see yourself represented on TV, and then when someone like Tara comes along, being in a wheelchair, too, it's like, if she can do stuff, I can. Yep. I mean that's amazing. It just shows how po powerful representation is on in media. So what a what a great story that is, uh, and that has to be part of your first podcast, Tara, because that's, that's amazing. A, he's my first guest. Oh, that's amazing because yes. that's, oh, that's such a powerful message. Wow. Yeah. And I kept and I agree. I kept, I kept like, saying I kept saying that I didn't want to be the first kid. Yeah, he wanted me to get Emily, but I got it. It's gonna take time because she emails, but she doesn't check it often. <laughs> oh, Emily, Emily Kingsley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh my God, Emily. Yep. Oh, yes. Wow. I have to so share you my list, Bob. I was making. Remember, you said to make a list of people that I would yeah. want. Yeah, I have made some, so I will let you know okay. later. Absolutely. Yeah, he keeps me on task too. He's like, "Okay, we give you a task. Come back to me when you're done with it." Okay? That's great. That's so good. He's keeping that's... me uh, on task. <laughs> that's awesome. That's <laughs> that's that's super amazing. Now, me, now yeah. Bob, you are like inspiring Tara. And now yeah. me and you, now me and you, Joey, we have to do a a separate episode of my podcast if you're down to do that anytime bob i'll send you my um uh, uh jim sent your email address i'll send it to you after this cool awesome so cool. going back to uh writing for celebrities you also wrote um <laughs> some of the celebrity specials including elmo palooza and elmo's christmas countdown what what were some of your memories with those oh man elmo palooza was super fun i i say this a lot to people like um, I, I wasn't a writer. Like I literally, Lisa Simon, who was a producer of the show, uh, saw something of mine that she thought was funny. And I wasn't a writer. And I thought from college, that I just didn't know how to write. And she saw something, let me audition. And I made it through. 
And thank God she was able to see something because I could not see it in myself. <clears throat> but when I started to write, I thought I should really read up on writing. And it was writing um, for movies and writing TV stuff, and, you know, separate than Sesame. Because Sesame was, a, at the time especially, it was something that only existed on Sesame Street. It was like a sketch show, but it was different. Mm -hmm. um, so I just started to read up on things. And thank God I, thank God I did because... When somebody comes to you and then asks you your opinion on something, if you have, like, if you've been reading up on it and you know the language of it, you can make sort of intelligent comments about it. And that's what happened with Elmo Palooza. I was just kind of still a new, pretty new writer. <clears throat> and somebody asked what I thought of a script and I gave them my thoughts. And, and thankfully I knew what I was talking about. And they said, do you want to try, you know, rewrite this? And um, I did. And, uh, and then from that, actually, I got the Sesame movie from that. So it, you just never sort of know what when you so always be prepared, you know, if, if this is the thing you want to do, like Tara, you want to be a podcaster, read up on everything about podcasting. So you know, and you're prepped for that day when it comes. And for me, I thought, well, I'm a Sesame writer, and that's enough. But I thought, well, what if I want to write other stuff? So I started to just take in everything. And then you, you know, you're still new at it, but you have the, you know, you have the vocabulary, you know, like, okay, you can see there's acts and there's act breaks and there's midpoints and, and you can speak intelligently about it when you're sort of breaking it down and, and saying what's wrong with something or what it needs to make it work. So yeah, I encourage you to anybody who has interest in things, just read up as much as you can or watch, you know, YouTube videos nowadays. And try to have a mentor if you can too. Or Mentors That's stupid. my mentor. That's right. That's and Bob. That's amazing that that Bob's now stepping up to be the mentor. It's awesome. It's like I was the mentor, now he's the mentor. That's like right. switch. Yeah. Yeah. And that's I just wanted to say I am so proud of you. Me? How you oh. grow, yes. How you've oh, grown thanks. It's like a person, a professional. Because I remember you when you were young, young. So I was, so I was I, just a young, a young man in his. I 20s. told them about how you and me, would, you would talk as stinky during our scenes, and we'd get in trouble for laughing too much. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Oh man, yeah. we were young. We were young. Yep. You were, you were a lot younger than me, but I was still kind of young. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You were like mom's best friend. I know. I so yeah. yeah I, your mom was the best. She was so yeah. lovely and kind. She, yeah. 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 I miss her. Absolutely. Well, yes. Yeah. So, so uh, <coughs> I was I was just gonna quickly ask her what was uh Elmo's Christmas countdown like? Cause I, I know didn't you win an Emmy for that one? Um, I think I, no, I won um a WGA award. Oh, okay. Which was super wow. fun, cool, and it was uh. It, yeah, it was the only time because I've never been to the Emmys when I've won. Every time I've gone to the Emmys, I've never won. So uh, it was actually the only award show I was actually at and I got to make a speech. So it was super fun. Um, and uh, the writing of that <coughs> was awesome, but also kind of fluid because we never knew who we were going to have. Like it would change all the time. You'd have somebody booked and then they go, oh, they're canceling on us. And I remember we had, you know, Tony Sirico and... Um, the other guy from The Sopranos, and we had them dressed as Bert and Ernie, and I thought, I never asked for a celebrity picture, but I want a picture of them in those outfits. That's that such an icon. <laughs> an iconic. Ah, yes. Yes. Hilarious. But, so that was a really fun uh, show to write. Um, you know, I just thought it was, everything came together really kind of nicely on that show. And it was just the structure of it was so easy to, because it was a countdown calendar, and you went into the things. It could be fluid, that it could change with whomever you got you know booked absolutely absolutely yep so uh so you also co-wrote the sesame street movie the adventures of um, uh, Elmo and Man, where you also uh, played the character bug uh, can you share any memories from doing that um i mean that was the greatest it was we shot in north carolina um mandy patenkin i was his henchman i mean it doesn't get better than that it was so fun i remember living in a Hotel and John Ritter was in the next room because he was shooting something there. Um, I just remember it being super, super fun. Gary Halverson was the director and he, he had this great energy. He'd be like, Mazzarino, come here. I need new lines. I need, he just was really hilarious. <laughs> um, and Mandy Patinkin lived in my neighborhood at the time. No way. And, uh, what? 
Yeah. So I remember after it was all over, uh, actually we had it, the first read through of that. We, there was another actor cast for that role. And I remember thinking, this is how fast it works in Hollywood. We did a read through and the person who read uh, Huxley's role was not up to what everybody wanted it to be. And I remember by the end of the day, that guy was gone. I thought, oh my God, one bad read through and you're out. And I thought that's really rough. Um, but then, you know, we luckily got Mandy in the role and it, he was amazing and he was so much fun to work with and so awesome. And then after that, I'd see him in the neighborhood. And one day I see him and I'm working on a Muppet movie, uh, uh, Muppets from Space. I'm one of the writers on it. Yeah, and I just love that movie. I see Mandy and he goes, come, come have lunch with me, Joey. And we go to this fish, re seafood restaurant in town and I'm sitting with him. And at the time I'm working on this Muppet movie. Uh, and and uh, they had, again, they, the, the, the director of that got fired and a new director came on and I'm still the writer. I had gotten the green light, um, but it was also written by Jerry Jewell and a bunch of other writers before me, but I had gotten the green light and a new director came on and I kept getting new scripts and it was still my name on it, but the scripts were not my writing and it wasn't that good. And I said, Mandy, I don't know what to do. Like, um, you know, I'm, this is happening and these scripts are coming in and it's not my writing and I don't think it's good. He goes, just quit. I said, what? He goes, yeah, 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 just quit. You know, you'll, you'll get another movie, just quit. I said, wow, I never thought about that. So uh, so I did, I, I, I quit the movie. And you know how many movies I wrote after that? Take a guess. Zero, I wrote zero after that. Don't listen to Mandy Patinkin when he tells you to quit. Well, um, he's got roles going on for days. For days, for days, but mm -hmm. I took it. Yeah. I, yeah. I did. I quit. No, but I, uh, I don't blame Mandy. He, he. It was absolutely the right thing to do. But uh, I always uh, think that's a funny story because Mandy, <laughs> Maverick, who could do whatever he wants, and uh, I'm just a guy who writes puppet stuff. Did you have a moment where you were like, "I am having lunch with Mandy Patinkin"? Oh my god. No, because we had already worked together, and he's just okay. like such a. He's just such a. He's chill. He's chill. He's the best. I love so, him. Yeah. I got a. I got a deep cut question for you. Yes, Bob. He's good with so, those. Mm -hmm. So, there's a movie that you wrote that never got made, and I've asked several people about it, and I want to know. Hmm. What's the movie, Bob? There's a movie that you wrote based on one of my based on one of my favorite cartoons, PB and J Otter. Oh my gosh, did that not even get made? Yes, I did write a PB and J Otter. It not I didn't even remember it didn't get made. And I've talked to Jim about Jim Jenkins. He doesn't even remember anything about it. No, no, it's definitely it was it was called The Legend of Snail Darter or something like that. And it was like it was like once in a blue moon. I don't even think I have that script anymore, but I thought it even got made, but you're right. Oh. It was a movie version of PB and J Otter. And I think it was called the legend of snail daughter. Yeah, he told me it was something along the lines of like Noah Yark or something like we did. We no, know? it wasn't that. Or was it? Or was it no, it was, I don't remember Noah's Ark being part of it. Um, and, and actually Eric Weiner, who created Doro was, Actually, he was part of I would love to connect you, you and Jim if you're not connected with him. Uh, you know what? He's still like a, a Facebook friend, but I he's love so him. so great. Hey, he's just a kind human being, too. Yeah. Um, but yes, I can't believe how you know that I did that. But yes, I didn't even know it didn't get made, but it was a great uh, experience, especially because I got to meet those guys and work with those guys. Yeah. And these guys are seriously educated on their stuff. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> I, yeah. That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> that along with Monster Clubhouse are two things I haven't thought about in 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> just like, right. You know how people make up rumors online? Who knows? Like, who yeah. knows if it's true? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good rumor because it is true. I, but I'm going like to, now, now you inspired me to legend. go back to old hard drives, Bob, and see if I have that script somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Now he's going to go dig in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he's gonna go look for it now. I'm gonna send uh, it to Jim. And be like, look what I have. Yeah, look what I am. Let's make it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's make it. Yeah. <laughs> make it happen. Even um, if we have to do a camcorder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Stop um, motion. Yeah. Stop. Mo stop motion would be cool, actually. Because oh, I know, because because it because I know it was like. 2D animated, but yeah. stop motion PPG Otter actually sounds kind of intriguing. Not gonna lie, it kind of does. Yeah, for um, sure. 
I know, I know we're kind of running short here, uh, and I know we're going to skip some other questions here, but I wanted to bring up uh, Blues Room because I yes. I loved Blues Room as a kid. Yes. Uh, you got to up to your yes. Rory Soros, yeah. Sprinkles, and Boogie Woogie. And yeah. like a, as we were talking earlier, that was one of the, also one of the first puppet shows I discovered as a kid. I still have a childhood yeah, uh-huh. copy of Blues Room yeah. somewhere. Um, I think yeah, I do have some Blues Room stuff too. Um, but see, but see, I grew up on it, Jakey. <laughs> Chris and I, Chris and I were born in 2000. Jake was 04. Um, yeah, well, that was when was the it? show what came out. I think it was 04. Right around, right around yeah. that time. Yeah, so four. What was it? What was it like getting to work on Blues Room? Um, you know, I, I loved working on that show. It was super fun. I didn't always love the scripts on that show, but I did love the puppets. I thought the puppets were super fun and great. Oh, yeah. I was a big fan of uh, Blues clues just as a person yes. Sesame Street. Oh, yeah. seeing yes. Steve for the first time on camera I thought I love oh, this guy gets it like they this show gets it it's not uh he's not talking down to kids he's talking real to kids and I thought this guy this is great and then when they when I had the opportunity to audition for that show I thought oh this could be a lot of fun and it really was I mean um it was kind of stressful because the shoot the shoots were always um not easy there was a lot of puppets but I loved, especially when we introduced Blue's brother, I got to play Sprinkle. Is that his name, Sprinkles? The Sprinkles, yes. Yes, uh-huh. Love Sprinkles. Um, that was so fun because that was Noel playing Blue at the time. He was puppeteering Blue. He didn't voice it. And it was he and I, and we would just go on, and we did a bunch of location shooting, and that was a lot of fun. And it was just a good a good group of puppeteers. It was I remember Matt Vocal was on that show, and uh, uh, Cheryl Blaylock was on that show. Blakely. Um, love Cheryl. Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a oh. good time, and I loved Rory. I thought Rory was super fun to do. Rory oh, yes. of all the characters that, yeah, he was that. That's probably the closest to who I am. I think. See, that was a bit out of my demographic, but I still watch it because I love Blue growing up and just yeah, yes, he's like a different, the character in a different world, and like working with Angela and the team over there must have been really great too. It was yeah. great. Uh, uh, Donovan was the the you know um yeah Joe that. yeah uh huh Donovan is amazing he's so funny and and uh and fun to work with yeah it was a good it was a good show I I I can't even tell you that's fun that you funny you say 2004 I'm trying to remember it in my timeline of life and I'm like I think I I think I became a dad around the time we were shooting that maybe 2006 we were still shooting it but yeah it was definitely yeah. fun and I know Jake has a question about the character that you're currently doing on uh TikTok. Oh, yes, oh, you're yes. currently doing Chicky Bok Bok. I'm also like, you know, I'm doing Chiki. those now. Me too. I love Chicky yes. Bok Bok. Yes. So, so yeah, I, I, uh, I'll get him. I'm going to get Chicky for you. Let me get oh, right. my God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, oh fanboys, you know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> fanboys, you know. are having a moment. Uh, well, looks looks like we're going to make a graphic for Chicky Bok. There, there he is. <laughs> there he is. Ah, Chicky Bok Bok. How are you? I'm doing good, Matt. How are you? I'm fantastic. It's oh, so fantastic. wonderful to meet you. That's great. That's great seeing nice, you, nice to meet you too. Yeah. So, yeah, Jake, yeah. Jake, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you Brady Bunch style and look over here. So you have a question <laughs> for me? What what Chicky? Oh, I thought you had a question for me. Oh, <laughs> I mean, make yeah, one up. Make, make one, one up. Well, make one up. <laughs> well, well, Chicky, I was logging up doing a video for your TikTok. Yeah, I do like making the TikToks. It, it takes a lot of time, though. I can't do it all the time. I, I, I'm a chicken who lives a busy life. Yeah. <laughs> but I do like Chicky Buck Buck on the TikTok. Yes. Are you hoping <laughs> to be an influencer someday? I'm hoping, you know, but mostly with the poultry crowd. Yeah. I want to, you know, influence other birds. I was very shocked when, when Twitter changed its logo from a blue bird to just an X. I thought that was really a step back. For, so, yes. for, for, for also, also yes. are, you, are you insulted that you're not in the Chicken Run uh, reboot, the sequel? No, 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 I'm not insulted at all. I'm not insulted. I did audition for it, but I didn't get the part. It's not like I'm bitter about it, but... They went, but, you know, they went with they some went, other... They went another way. Yeah. They went, with, they went with Clay. What could you do? Clay. Right. 
<laughs> now you really you want real, so much longer. You want real flesh and feathers, not clay. Come on now. <laughs> not of most guys. Yes. Oh. So yeah. Oh, so <laughs> designed by Michael. Oh, nice. nice. Oh, Michael did that. Michael designed. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, saw, I, saw I, what I was just gonna ask. How was it built? Yeah. Yeah. He was. Uh, uh, Michael uh, uh, designed it, and then I can't remember. I just found out that who the person was who built it, but I can't. Remember. I did too. I think. Oh, what's his name? John Cody. I think. Oh, he did, did well. He did an amazing job. Yeah. I I just people. saw. I I think. I yeah. I, I saw a like that. post. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I saw his post and I was like, "Oh my gosh, you're amazing." So yeah, this is Chicky. But uh, yeah, I mean, I miss puppeteering. He is. Uh, he was actually designed for a show I was pitching a few years ago, and now lately, uh, those TikToks are sort of me trying to figure out a sh- what I want to do with him because I, um, I've been sort of working on that and figuring it out, and there were just ways for me to um, sort of workshop. Explore. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yes. explore the character yeah. and what and who he is and where he lives and what his his sort of outlook. Definitely. So that's about me. Enough about me. What about you? <laughs> well, <laughs> what do you want to know? What do you want to know about us? Uh, I would like to know. Um, is that a real working fireplace? Yes, right. is it? Well, well, it it used to be mm-hmm. working. We have a we have a pellet stove in our family room. Uh, but okay. this did this did work at at one point actually. The, the room I'm in actually used to be our, our living room for a time. Uh-huh. Uh, we had a, I think we added an expansion on the other side of the house, like, I don't know, about, well, goodness, about it's... 17 years ago. Okay, uh, there you go. Is it so, new? You have a, an M with eyes on it, Matt. Yeah, that's oh, right. Oh, oh yes, this. I was like, you um, noticed that too. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was made. That that was made. The M was made by a, a good friend of of uh, Jake and I. His name is Keelan. Uh, he, we had. Um, I have a poster. Re- I have a poster right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I also have a letter J. Um, he also wait, made. Sort, sort, of, sort of a. There's. Well, it's it's like. Is it on the uh, chair? Where's your J, no. Jake? Yeah. Where's, yeah, where's, where's your J? Jake? Um. So while while while, while he's getting that. While he's getting that, um, there's a Jim Henson exhibition going on right now where, where I'm at. Uh, it's, uh, Ec- Imagination Unlimited. And uh, Jake and I had actually met up in person a couple months ago uh, while we were there. It's, like, wow. Me and him and uh, six other good friends, very good friends of ours who uh, who we've known for a couple years now. And uh, the exhibit itself is really cool, but just meeting each other in person was amazing. Yes. And uh, uh- you got a J, Keelan. he's got an M. I love it. By the way, those are my initials, Joey Mazzarino. So just send them over, guys. <laughs> um, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see if he can uh, build, build some for you. That'd be no, good. no, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, so. No, but, uh, but yeah, he, he made these uh, himself, handmade. Some, some sort of wood. I can't, do you remember oh, it's what wood? I thought it was wood? Yeah, no, 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 no. Those, that's that's wood. I don't even remember what kind of wood it is. But uh, to answer your question, Tara, uh, that kind of that is a top hat. I got that at a Mardi Gras event uh, a couple months ago. Is it just for yeah. I like that. I thought it came with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the drawings are made by uh, our good friend Alex. Uh, she does these beautiful drawings, and she she oh, met yeah. up with She's us a couple beautiful. months ago. There I am. Uh, DJ Bob is on the air, and there he oh, is. Yeah, there he is. At a hey, How are you, Bob? Hey, uh, How are you? Yes. I'm yes. good. How are yes, you? He's uh... just been being shy because he thinks he has to shape. <laughs> <laughs> It yeah. So, so, like, so, like so since we have to, since we have to, uh, very close to wrap, wrapping up very soon. So, um, oh, yeah. so, uh, yes. so, to anyone watching or listening, what would you like to say to those who have been supporting you throughout your career over the years? Oh, to anybody who's um, I, I uh, well, it's always nice to that. Uh, I love that you know you write the stuff for kids, but I love things that when it sticks with a child who then goes on to adulthood and. Not even for the nostalgia fact, but more for the like, did it help? I, I yeah. just hope that we, when all the all of us on Sesame Street and other shows I work for, that the things we're teaching you stick with you, whether it be you know letters and numbers or yeah, problem solving. But really, it's the stuff about you know, it's uh, you know, it's so I loved hearing Tara your story and Bob your story about Tara, 
and Emily's work and how important that is, you know, her, she's always been such a huge advocate for representation. So for everybody that watched, I just, um, I'm happy that stuff that I got to work on in my career meant something and uh, hopefully yeah. it helped and hopefully, hopefully it made your life easier, better, more fun. Uh, and, it definitely uh, made my life more fun. Yeah, mine too. Uh, yeah, right. absolutely. So I, I'm, I'm always thankful that, uh, that it, cause you know, TV, it's very ephemeral, right? It's here one minute, it's gone the next, but when something sticks and uh, it matters to people, whether it be characters or some uh, sketch they saw. I mean, just something as simple as that Christmas special that I brought up earlier. That Absolutely. was something I did in the, in like probably mid summer, whatever, but I watch it every year. Yeah. Well, that's, and I love that. I love that. It's part of your that's... Christmas traditions and uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's just, a, it's an honor to have been part of a thing that matters to people and to put my voice in there and add it to the rest of the amazing voices in that chorus of Sesame Street. Uh, so I'm just thankful. Yeah. So if Absolutely. people would like to connect with you, where can people find you? Um, you know, I, I, I'm not a big social media person as poor Chris will, uh, attest to since I, I check my LinkedIn very few times. Um, but Facebook, same thing, <laughs> Facebook, same thing. Like I don't, I just don't go on a lot. I, I mean, I guess like those like TikTok or Instagram maybe is the best thing. I just am not, uh, you know, I just yeah. don't, I don't do a lot of that stuff. Right. But, um, but uh, you know, yeah. I'm thankful that you guys are interested, and thanks for thanks for uh, having me on. Yes, of course. Like, yes, first, and Matt first. over here is going to ask the uh, last question. Go ahead, Matt. Go, Matt. Yes. Yeah, so the so this last question we ask, we usually say for the end, we ask every guest this question. Of course, this podcast is called Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. When you think of nostalgia, what do you think of? Or in your own words, how do you define the word nostalgia? Um. So nostalgia for me is the thing that brings you back to your childhood. As you could probably tell from the stuff behind me, I have tons of stuff from my childhood. Uh, I have like, you know, McDonald land figures and things like that. It's this feeling of um, before, it's this before feeling, right? This happy, yeah. this happy feeling you had when you were a kid and everything was all cool and you didn't have the stress of bills yeah. or or life oh, to deal with no big responsibilities yeah no big responsibilities there's a comfort to it and a fun to it and uh as as a collector of things from my past i don't do it as much but when i would get a toy i had as a kid there was some part of me that became that kid and oh yeah that can, that, can, that can me too i'm a big like funko guy and i collect i have over 200 of those and and yes. even, I mean, whenever I get a new toy from my childhood, I always try to make sure that it's healed or something. Just and so do, I, do you open it, Bob? No. No, <laughs> see, see, I, I have like, Funko Pops in the back, too, and they're, I never open them. I'm a, I'm a like, 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 I got this, this toy from when I was a kid, and I made sure that it had the KB toy sticker on it. Just, just, oh, just my so God, it, that's a throwback. Yeah. Just so it looked, you know, authentic to the time that I originally had it. I'm, I'm a collector like that. Yes, <laughs> so yeah, it's, definitely. <laughs> it's a, it's something. Nostalgia just has that thing that it brings you back to this time, you know, before you had to worry about life, and uh, anything that brings that back is, is sort of special, and you could feel like a kid again. Yes, so. great words. Great words. Thank you. Thank you yes. very much. Hot. Yay. Yeah, right. Wonderful. But again, Joey, you know, you've, you know, the work you've done has been a part of our lives for so many years and cannot wait what's next in store for you. Thanks. Yes. That's likewise. Nice I was going to, I was going to see that scene. Nice, 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 nice to meet you yes, too. It's, it's, great, our... it's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. Love you, Joey. Joey. It's, it's, it's been a pleasure. Love you, Tara. It's good to see you. Yes. I'll, it's all I'll definitely sure. be better about being in touch now that now that my anxiety it. is getting better and I'm not worrying. So. That's Yay! Good. That's good. <laughs> yes, and to all of our viewers and listeners, this brings another episode of Jake's Happiness Out Show to a close. Absolutely enjoyed having Joey Mazzarino on, having yes, Bob guest you, host, Joey, and having it's, an, it's an absolute pleasure. Tara come in to surprise Joey. But, thank um, you so everyone. much for allowing me to come surprise him. Of, yeah, of course, course, of course. Keep on the lookout. Thank you very much. Yes, keep on the lookout for more wonderful interviews. And as always, what do we say, Jake? Keep massage alive. Take care, everyone. See you next time for more. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show interview. Be sure to follow Jake and the crew on social media and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye-bye.